Really hard, really hard. With everything you've got. From the moment her first daughter was born, television presenter and mother of three, Emma Willis, has been in awe of midwives. You can, you can. You just kind of sit back and go, what incredible women, what an incredible job. Push now, push, come on. That was when my mission to deliver babies began. Emma's been given a unique opportunity to find out just what it takes to work on the front line of a busy maternity unit. If you're going to do something like this, you have to do it properly. Hi. At a time when there is a national shortage of midwives, Emma will immerse herself on the ward for 10 weeks supporting the team. I just wanted to see if we could get some contractions going. She will share the pressures. For the emergency room. Where is it? The fears. Your heart is going. Oh, yeah. It's coming out, it's coming out. And the joys. I've even been written up on the board. You're a dad. It's a girl. <laughs> of delivering babies. Well done, you. So much hair, you are doing so well. I mean, you're getting I'm not joking, I can't see this ever again. She passed out. Yeah, really? on poor Sarah. Can I Watch your legs. And Emma is starting another 13-hour shift at the Princess Alexandra Hospital. You know you didn't put the toast in. Oh, what? Where she's been training to be a maternity care assistant for the past four weeks. Yeah. It is funny, isn't it? Because it just looks like you're on your phone. Yeah, I know. But you're not. On the antenatal ward, Emma is part of the team being briefed on a patient who has been in and out of the hospital throughout Emma's time there. Okay. So I2 is Michelle. She came in with a PV bleed initially. She's got a low lying placenta. Um, she's taking insulin and metformin. Floods have been taken. She had some IV paracetamol overnight for pain and her blood sugars this morning were 6.4. So she'll just need a review. Michelle is 33 weeks pregnant and has been suffering with heavy bleeding for the past month of her pregnancy. Why are you here again? <laughs> I came in Friday, uh, Friday evening for another bleed. So I, I must have just missed there. you then. Yeah, you did. The last 24 hours have been OK. I wanted to go home yesterday, but they wouldn't let me. So hopefully today. Yeah, we'll be today. I'm determined. I don't want to be back here until I'm ready for the C-section. Yeah. Well, let's hope we don't see you until at least next week. Yeah. Michelle's placenta is partially covering the opening to her womb, so she will be having a planned caesarean section. If she continues to have bleeds, doctors will need to deliver the baby prematurely. This pregnancy has been hard going. <laughs> Nothing like my first. It's the joys of having a placenta that's low line. <laughs> His heartbeat's been absolutely fine. Movement's been like no contractions. It's just the bleeding. I'm hoping to at least get to 37 weeks because it's only a month away from my due date. In her role as maternity care assistant, Emma is being trained and tested in new skills by practice development midwife, Mandy. Particularly if you make a mistake, yeah, and then you have to redo them. And this morning, she's facing her biggest training challenge so far. Come in. Mm. Welcome. Okay, thanks. I never knew that um, part of an MCA's role was taking blood. I am looking forward to challenging myself. I just don't want to mess it up. 
For her first attempt, Emma is practicing on a simulator, a skin-like surface that has veins and fake blood. So you're going to need to palpate to see if you can find a vein. Oh, there. Yeah. So okay. that's one. Yep, that's one. That's Absolutely. one. Yep. There's a very small one there. Yep. Is there? There is a very small one there, you're right. Clean the area in circular motions. <laughs> oh, I'm scared now. <laughs> Pull the guard back. That's it. Very satisfying when you Oh see my that god, it's going. so satisfying. Okay, excellent. Emma will do more practice on the simulator before testing her skills on a patient. It's all good in theory, you know, oh, I want to take blood, I love blood, oh, get a needle out. But, you know, the reality is very different because I don't want to stab anyone. <laughs> Not doing more than half, by the way. This is your half. Yeah, my half. I'll go half-half. I'll split it with you. Lovely. And how many weeks are you? In addition to assisting with births, Emma is also expected to assist with post-birth operations. Great. Oh, don't forget my trolley. <laughs> At the end of her 17th shift as a maternity care assistant, Emma was in theatre with MCA Sarah, observing the repair of a post-birth vaginal tear. A vaginal tear is where the skin has all come apart, so you see a lot of, um, a lot of the tissue. Because the woman's legs are up in stirrups, you, you will see everything. It is not a nice thing to see. Our cameras weren't allowed in theatre, but just 10 minutes in, Emma shocked everyone. We get everything set up, and then once we got the legs up into stirrups, she um, saw the tear. She turned around and went, I'm just going to compose myself, and she just went completely white. She just passed out. Her eyes started rolling, and she just went on the floor. All I remember is me shouting her name. After fainting, Emma was taken straight to a recovery room. We got her onto a bed and then um, the, doc the anaesthetist wanted everyone to just check her blood pressure, do an ECG, just make sure she was OK. Whilst observing surgery on a vaginal tear, Emma has fainted and is awaiting the results of an electrocardiogram to check her heart. I feel really sick. Really? Want a sick ball? No, I don't think I will be sick. But you know, you just feel. Oh, good. It's fine. It's happy with that, so it's fine. Thanks. It's good news. Emma's ECG results show that there's nothing seriously wrong. You know when you hear someone panic call your name? That's what I heard when Emma. I came round. Emma! Emma! <laughs> I was like, ugh. Emma's been sent home and is under strict doctor's orders to take things easy. I feel, um, I feel really out of it and not quite right. Uh, and they have told me that I have to rest, so um, not to go in tomorrow, which also makes me feel a bit silly and like I can't hack it. Yeah, embarrassing I think is definitely, it's 
definitely the word I would use. It's been two days since Emma fainted and she's still off work. This afternoon, she's arranged to meet up with her mum to talk about what happened. My mum was an auxiliary nurse on um, labour ward for about 15, 20 years. My mum is, she's wonderful. She's just an all round good egg. We call her King Calf because she's, because she bosses it in a good way. And she's bossy. <laughs> How are you feeling today? <laughs> really stupid. And I was embarrassed. And I Why felt like... Because I kind of... You know, like, when so you like think... The, the wimpy kid? I felt like the wimpy kid, yeah. I've seen many people have to go to theatre, either faint, fainted or feel faint. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I know, but... <laughs> I do. No, really, I'm not just saying it to make you feel better. It is very com it's pretty common. It's not an everyday um, occurrence, but it does happen. I've seen quite a few in my time. The newbies. They normally, normally are the newbies. the newbies, yeah, yeah. All I've ever known of my mum and her work in life was her working in hospitals. You know, it's been a massive part of my childhood and my, and my life, really. I remember sometimes picking you up from work with Dad, and my, like obviously my biggest memory is that hat. No, your art, your smell. Oh, you did, didn't your you? Your smell. You had you yeah. say you smell like hospital. I used to suck my thumb, and I sniff her arm. And that's what I would do when she came in from work. I'd just suck my thumb and grab her arm and just sniff it because I love the smell of it. And now when I walk into hospitals, I'm like. It smells like my mum. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Normally people go, ooh, hospital stuff. I'm like, hmm, mum. <laughs> yeah, it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> See, not everybody's put up by a hospital smell. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what it is. I know, it's weird, isn't it? Fancy liking that smell, but maybe that's why I always wanted to do it. At the hospital, a new couple have arrived on the birthing unit. Nice long deep breath. Well done. Amy and husband Oliver are expecting their second child. We'll just be nice and calm and relaxed. Nice and nice long deep breath in that gas. Well done. Amy's already 10 centimetres dilated, and midwife Sherelle is overseeing her water birth. I've been present in about five pool births. The water provides uh, an amount of buoyancy, so mums feel a little bit weightless. Whilst Amy works hard to give birth, Oliver's going to be working at making amends. So, do we know if we've got a little girl or boy on board this time we don't? Yeah, oh, right. very exciting. So are you going to tell us then, Oliver, or, yeah. or you're going to tell? Yeah. If you tell Amy then. Well, last time it took so long that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're like. Blanked out at the key moment. And you're like, <laughs> what is it? The first pregnancy, um, I was kind of nominated with the responsibility of, of calling out the sex of the baby when it arrived. And I was so overwhelmed the first time that when, when I saw that the baby was a girl, uh, I just completely froze up and nothing was coming out of my mouth and my wife actually had to jump in. So this time <laughs> we'll, we'll have a, we'll a, a do-over, yeah. yeah? OK, we'll do a do-over. So I'll keep it and you can tell us what we've got. <laughs> just 30 minutes after her arrival, Amy is ready to start pushing. 
Second babies do come a lot quicker because your body has, has sort of gone through that motion before. You've got muscle memory, so they are a little bit more um, stretched to them. With the aid of a small birthing mirror, midwife Shirelle is checking for signs of the baby's head. So the next one, I want you to do exactly what you're doing, OK? Oh, my God. And push, because the baby's head is, is there. Push, push, push. Oh! Good, good, good. A bit more, bit more. Yeah. Long pushes into your... Really good. So right into your bottom, that's it. Bit more, bit more, bit more. Yeah. Don't scream. Oh, Just focus and push into your bottom. Keep your bottom under the water, but I want you to focus on that pushing it. It's going to sting, OK, because baby's head is right there. But I want you to try and just give little pushes for me. Little pushes. Try not to scream. Just 38 minutes after the first push, and Amy's baby's head is born. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. That's it. Just hold on to that. It's all right. Oliver's got the gas. Let go. Let go. Let go. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Big push down. That's it. Big push down. Go on. Go on. Push. 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 Really hard, Amy. Good. 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 Yes. Push. 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 Yes. Push. 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 Right. Lift. Go down. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, Just one hour and 17 minutes after arriving at the hospital, Amy and Oliver's baby is born. Congratulations. The next day, Emma is back at work. Morning. Mm. You feeling better? Yeah. And is greeted by veteran maternity care assistant Val. Oh, what was it? Like the shock of it or I think it brought back memories. It might well have done. I know, like this is the first time when you were psychological trauma. No, but it's it's true. It will be alright. Yeah. I think they're easing me back in gently on birthing. <laughs> what, uh, oh, what, going on there instead of labour? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. All right, then. I'll see you later. See you later. Bye. Bye. But before Emma can get started on her rounds, Alison Steele, the deputy head of midwifery. How are you? You right? Yeah, how are you? Can you the acid? Has asked to see Emma. Star fainting at work doesn't happen frequently, but it certainly does happen. Sometimes it's because they're very tired or the heat's got to them. For some, if they've had children, it brings back memories. So they're having to deal with sort of flashbacks and things like that. Oh, am I going to get told off? <laughs> So, Emma, I do want to check in how you are, because there was a little episode the other day. Um, I feel good now, but yeah. now I'm more determined than ever to get back in there and feel at ease with it. I mean, it's great, because Michelle, who you've been following, is possibly going to theatre today. OK. And I just wanted to make sure you felt yes. you wanted to go back in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Wonderful. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, I'm you. glad you're all right, but don't yeah. hesitate to come and find me if you want to. Thank you very much. Word has also reached training and development midwife Mandy that Emma is back at work. She's just come up to me and said, a new lady's come in, she needs blood's done, are you ready? And I literally want to vomit in the bucket. <laughs> Emma learned to take blood on artificial skin 
but today she'll be taking blood from a patient for the first time. Charlotte? Yeah. Hi, I'm Emma. Um, are you okay if I take your blood sample? Yes. So I'm just going to look at your arms, make sure I can find somewhere to take your blood. Uh, may I? Um, Mandy, I definitely don't think I can get anything. No, I think it's going to be quite difficult from, to try to get one from, from here. <laughs> what about looking anywhere else? Well, I mean, her hands look mm -hmm. nice and juicy. Do you okay if I do it? Yeah. Great. Maybe just relax. I've suddenly gone really hot. <laughs> You'll be fine. Remember what we said? Yeah. In a 30 degree angle. There you go. You go and then you go. That's it. Keep going. Keep going. A little bit more. Really? Yeah, I think you're probably there now. Okay. There's your bottle. Oh, I think no. you might have popped it. Yes. Never mind. Oh no, Just straight. I'm so sorry, Charlotte. Let's, well, let's have a little look now and see if it's stop bleeding. <laughs> oh, I'm so annoyed at myself. We're going to have a chat. Just want to kick myself. Well, the minute you're given a human arm and a needle and you're asked to just stab it in a vein and get the blood out, it's absolutely terrifying. I mean, I panicked. I literally was shaking and I blew up her vein. For the past five weeks, Michelle, who is only 35 weeks pregnant, has been bleeding from a low-lying placenta. It's a concern for both staff at the maternity unit and her husband, Mark. The risks for both Michelle and her five-week premature baby's health are increasing daily. So today, doctors are going to perform an emergency caesarean section. So we didn't quite make 36. No, we didn't get there. But it's better than 34. Yeah. And it all changed yesterday, so. So yeah. what happened yesterday? This was my SIF big bleed. So they've held on as long as they could. Yeah. And I think the risk of the percent of coming away is now is too high. And yeah. if that happens, it's like... Yeah, nobody wants that. No, everyone's in danger, so... If Michelle's placenta were to detach, it would deprive her baby of oxygen and vital nutrients. It's first time I've had a C-section, I'm completely... I have no idea what to expect. You feel a bit of tugging. Yeah. But not like, yeah. you know, you can feel someone rummaging. I can't feel any pain. Yeah, I've had two, yeah. yeah. So it's all right then. I mean, I'm terrified yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. They can't have one. Oh, oh, it's got some. Hi. Hello. I'm ready to take you to the theatre. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. I will see you in there. Okay. I'll see you in there. Seen a bit of your pop, see? Yeah. Got you. We got you sorted. Yeah, I've got everything. Are you ready? During Michelle's surgery, Emma's going to be running with MCA Zara in the same theatre that she fainted in. <laughs> no, I might get some water though. I love fear, but it is a big responsibility. I'm good at catching people. <laughs> I've not known any staff to faint at work. Quite a few newly qualifieds, they're a bit touch and go until they've been there a few times. Zara and Emma will be assisting with counts, both of the surgical instruments to ensure none are left inside the patient and the timings of each significant surgical procedure. So she comes and we'll put the time on the ball. When Emily puts the cuff to we'll put the time on. We are dependent on, we need to know that everything's stocked, everything's ready, everything's clean and good to go. With Michelle all prepped, the anaesthetist first administers a spinal catheter to numb the pain of the operation. Just relax. Take your shoulders, take a deep breath in, and then go up, let your shoulders go up. Right. Can you push it back into my thumb? It's going to be a very graphic operation and may make uncomfortable viewing for Emma, especially after fainting in theatre three days ago. Do you want this bit done? No, no, that's not. Sure? Enough. Yeah, yeah, I don't have to You're done. Yeah. 
The surgeons make an incision into Michelle's stomach so they can get the baby out. I keep forgetting to breathe, I keep going. <laughs> and that muscle right there yes. just yes. torn open. Just five minutes into the operation and the surgeon delivers Michelle's baby. As he's five weeks premature, his lungs aren't fully developed. Michelle gets to see her baby briefly before he's taken to the hospital's neonatal intensive care unit to be closely monitored. With her baby boy in safe hands, it's now time to get Mum Michelle stitched back up. Cross it's down to Emma to do the final count. Come shoulder ramp, please. One, two, three, four, five, six. Lovely. I've got one, two, three here. Four, five, six. Lovely. Right, how'd you feel about it all? I'm so glad I came back in. Good job. Yay, it was a success. It was a success on many levels, actually. Baby is wonderful, and Michelle was absolutely fantastic. Everyone's very happy with how it went, and I didn't faint. Win, win, win. Despite five weeks of heavy bleeds, baby Oliver has come into the world largely unscathed. Just four hours after her C-section, and Michelle is off to the intensive care unit to see her baby properly for the first time. You're pretty good at this. Huh? I tired. <laughs> you sound shocked. I've crashed in so many times, not with women on, don't worry. It's because it's Michelle on here, I think. Yeah, I know. My second child was in intensive care straight from delivery for a few days, and so I've kind of been that mum who was quite overwhelmed and, and, and I suppose partly panicked because it, sometimes it can look worse than it is. And how are you feeling about seeing him? I'm really excited. Hey. I wish you wanted to see the soon as I've got out of the world since Yeah, I bet. <laughs> In just a short time, baby Oliver's breathing has improved. He no longer requires oxygen and instead Tubes are helping with airflow to keep his lungs open between breaths. He's the same weight as my little one was, six four. Oh, bless him. Look at him holding your finger. Is that what he's been doing? He's just clinging on like this. It's horrible when you see them I hate all this as well, isn't yeah. it? I hate that he's got it all on, but at the end of the day, it's, it's helping him get stronger. Yeah. If baby Oliver's condition continues to improve this fast, he will be out of the incubator tomorrow and out of intensive care in just a couple of days. 
Well, I'm so pleased you're both OK. B and Turk are having their second child. Oh God, why have we done this again? Baby girl. They have been married for six years. We met each other as ten-year-olds. Uh, we actually grew up about three roads away from each other. I knew I wanted to marry B quite quickly. She's a beautiful lady and caring and loving and a fantastic mum as well. Um, she's, she's my friend, she's my best friend. And to be fair, she's lucky she's got me as well, you know? It's your fault. You caught me when I was vulnerable. <laughs> I had gin in my, my body. <laughs> it's a good night. First time round with, with Sienna, I think it was the unexpected. I think now knowing the pain and everything else that goes along with it. I think she's a bit apprehensive, but I think she's going to be fantastic. Bee's baby is two days overdue, and despite having had contractions over those two days, her labour isn't progressing. But she's in good hands with midwife Nagma. How are you feeling? OK. I've been a midwife for 38 years now. I think I've probably delivered uh, probably coming up to about a thousand, so yes. Let's put it this way, I'm here till eight o'clock in the morning. We'll be done. And I'm going to have this baby. Good, because if, if you ain't, yeah. you're staying. I'm staying, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. OK, Danny. An hour after her arrival, Nagma is taking B to the labour ward to try to move her labour forward. Welcome to our labour ward. How's your contractions been? Yeah, still, they're still the same sort of pain. OK, if you could just lift and come towards me a little bit. Perfect, lovely. I am going to break your waters for you. Is that OK, darling? Yeah. We sometimes need to artificially break the waters, or we call it ARM, which stands for Artificial Rupture of Membranes, if their own waters haven't gone. I don't know how many ARMs I've done. Um, I'm going to say it's a lot. Using an amniotic hook, Nagma breaks bees' waters. Perfect. Loads of hair on your baby's head. Oh. <laughs> Get your breathing gun. With her waters broken, bees' contractions could intensify at any moment. Stop breathing with me. B's waters have been artificially broken and she's been in labour for over an hour with husband Turk and mum Chanel at her side. Oh, that one's bad. I know you are, but you're doing ah! so well. OK, keep the gas. Get the gas. Oh, OK, darling, if you could just lean back for me, please. B, you are nine centimetres dilated, oh, darling. Wow. What do you think? Midwife Nagma is on duty. B, one more centimetre to go. You're nearly there. Nine centimetres. It's literally a tiny, weeny bit of a moon shape rim of cervix left. So we are just literally now waiting for that one centimetre to go out of the way. And bish bash bosh, we'll have the baby. Oh. Can we bring both of these legs up, darling, at the same time? Oh. Because I feel you are fully dilated. Oh. Right, give me a push. If the pain is there, give me a push. Oh. 
Thank well you. done. I can see your baby's head. Loads and loads of hair. T, come and have a look. Keep it going. 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 You're there. You're there. Blow it. There is so much hair. You are doing so well. Give me a push again. There we go. Beautiful. Here she comes. Oh. Her head's up. Well done. Do you want to feel the head? Go ahead. Oh, my God. <laughs> Give Come me on. a nice big push. Let us get her out, darling. Come on. Come on. Right down there. Everything you got. Beautiful. You Here clever she comes. girl. Here she comes. Lovely. Lovely. She's out. There She's out. Go, my love. She's out. <laughs> she right. She is lovely. Two hours after her waters were broken, B and husband Turk welcome a new addition to their family. Congratulations. Oh, Happy yeah, birthday, yeah. baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Baby. It's definitely going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, lovely. It's a healthy baby girl, but the hard work is not over yet. B still needs to deliver the placenta. B, could you push for me, darling, a little tad? Perfect. One more push, my lovely. That's it. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. But whilst pushing the placenta out, B has started to bleed. I've just pulled the buzzer. Staff are going to come. Please don't get panicky. You right? just seem to be bleeding a little bit heavier than normal. Within seconds, B's situation has become critical and the emergency team arrive. PPH. Yeah, you're right. 14. Can I have a scribe, please? 0014. We need Venflon. We need 40, per 40 units. Please, 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 please. Now listen to me, please. You are bleeding. I'm just going to put a put a catheter into your bladder to empty your bladder for you. Are yeah, you okay? Could you push down for me, please, my darling? I need to get this placenta out. Third stage of labor is very important because if there is a small piece of membranes is left inside, you can bleed and bleed and bleed. And it could be detrimental to the woman's life. Moments later, B manages to push out the placenta and the hemorrhaging stops. It's a lot of blood, isn't it? Are you okay? Take your time. Why is she shaking? It's just all the hormones. Are you okay, Bob? B lost 600 milliliters of blood, but both mum and baby are fine. Listen, when anyone pulls an emergency button, you don't know what is going on. So my heart sank, but I knew we was in safe hands. Nine hours after baby Rainer's birth, Emma pays B and Turk a visit. Hello. Hello, how are you? Oh, good, I'm you. Emma. Nice, nice to meet you. B. Hello, yes. You look fabulous. I, you know, I just feel achy, bruised, yeah. but no, I yeah. feel great. So, did you go into birthing unit? So, they had an emergency situation where I pulled the buzzer, everyone rushed in. Oh, God. It was more to do with, couldn't get the placenta out, so it caused extra bleeding. Yeah. Same to do with the membrane being caught, etc. Um, but you know, <laughs> you're like, really? Yeah, we, uh, Honestly, I didn't know what was well, going on. One. That's it's terrifying, amazing. isn't it? Yeah. What yeah. did she weigh? Seven, eight. That's so nice. It's so nice because it didn't... makes such it make a difference. You this bit does. Well, like that, that <laughs> kind of immediately after. 
yeah. when you're together with your partner yeah. and that kind of whole little bubble that you're in yeah, is it's, amazing. It's that journey, isn't it? Yeah, um, totally. Listen, I'm gonna leave you be, but I'll pop Thank back later and, and see you before Thank you, you leave. So Thank much. you. After practicing taking blood all week. I'm hoping that I'm not gonna be as nervous as I was last time. Emma is about to have her skills put to the test. Hey babe, are you okay? Yeah, okay. Are you happy for me to do your bloods? Yes. <laughs> and this time, it's on B. Oh, she doesn't want it to happen. <laughs> oh, Mandy, not again. Do you want to check? Do you mind if I just have a look at this hand as well? Is that OK? Oh, oh that's a good one. Out. It's like Christmas. I'm just going to clean the area. Pop your arm there. That's the right way. About there, Mandy. Perfect. Sharp scratch. It's a successful result for Emma, and she passes with flying colours. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Get this yeah, Thank you, V. <sighs> Bloods this time round was a roaring success. Yay, me! <laughs> Honestly, I felt like a hero. I'm a qualified human vampire. Thank you for your wife's blood. You have to see that. You've got blue everywhere. She's got a lot of mine anyway. Come on, then. Uh, I'm going to drop. We're going to just take it up. No, no. That's such a nice family. That's it. Big push into your bottom. She has quick babies, right? Last time she pushed her baby out with the first urge. <gasps> They've had so many incredibly sad losses. I just can't even imagine how you recover from something like that. Is baby safe? Baby will be fine as long as we're quick. <laughs> <laughs>